Hey everyone, Brady from TextureLabs.org here with a tutorial to create this fog and text portrait in Adobe Photoshop. This is all done using simple techniques that I hope you guys will find useful. So let's jump into it. All right, getting started with a new document here, and I'm going to work at 4K resolution, 3840 by 2160, and I'll make the background kind of a neutral gray just to get started. I'll start by hitting T for the type tool. This is a font called Camberwell, which I'll link to. Then I'll use Command or Control T to transform and scale that up, get it more or less centered. Then up here in the type properties, I'm going to click the color box and bring the color of that type to kind of a bright yellow without getting too extreme on the saturation. Then let's get a piece of photography in here. This is an image I found on Pexels.com. It's a photograph by Matt Hardy, so shout out to Matt, and thank you for making this available. I'm gonna wanna clip out the background here before I copy and paste this. So I'll unlock this layer, and because there's such a clear distinction between the background and the foreground here, I can just use the Remove Background button here in the Properties tab. Then I'll right click on the mask and select Apply Layer Mask, and now I can copy paste this or I can actually drag this layer right into another document. I'll use Command or Control T to transform, scale that down and get it into place. And I'll rename this layer, I'll call it Model. Next, I can make any color or contrast adjustments to the image. I'm gonna use Command or Control U for a hue saturation adjustment. And if I just target the yellows, I can change the color of this yellow jacket. I think red will work better for this particular image. Then to get some of that smoky fog in here, I'm going to use this free texture from texturelabs.org, which I'll link to. There are about a thousand free textures on the site, all original resources that are available to everyone. If you appreciate that, do me a quick favor and hit the like button. That just helps the video to get ranked and ultimately helps to keep the site and all those resources free. All right, I'm going to make a quick copy of this fog image, then paste it down here over the background. Command or Control T to transform and scale that to be the width of the canvas here. And I'll rename this layer to, I'll call it Fog. And actually I'm gonna go ahead and drag the original background into the trash just to keep it nice and clean. Next I'm gonna make two copies of the Fog layer using Command or Control J. And I'll drag these layers to make kind of a club sandwich here with the Fog layer on top, one in between the text and the model, and one of course in the background here. I'll turn off the top layer for now and address these one at a time. So the background I'm going to leave as it is, then this middle layer, I'm going to double click on it to bring me to the layer's blending options. Then I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key and drag this black slider up to about 200 or so, creating a smooth transition from transparent in the dark areas of the layer to opaque in the light areas. I'll hit OK, then turn on the top fog layer and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to double click on the layer to take me to the blending options. Then I'll hold Alt or Option and drag the black slider up, this time to about 150. And to create even a little more transparency, I'll drag the other end of the black slider up to about 55. Then to refine a few details in the fog layer, I'll create a layer mask. And using the brush tool with the hardness set to zero and the flow set to 10%, I'll do a little bit of painting into the mask and clear out a few areas where I want the fog to be less apparent. The nice thing about fog and smoke textures is that they're so forgiving. If we take a look at this mask, it's actually pretty rough, but it totally gets the job done. Next, I'll create some depth of field by selecting this text layer and just giving it a simple filter blur, Gaussian blur. I don't need to keep that live. I can hit rasterize and blur that by maybe five pixels. Then for more of a targeted blur effect with the model here, I'm gonna use this blur gallery filter called Iris Blur. And here I can drag the circle around determining the shape of the blur, make sure the face remains in focus, and bring the blur amount to about six pixels. Then I think an overall color cast can help glue things together. Here's a simple way to bring some color to the image. I'll go to my fill and adjustment layers menu and create a solid color, and I'll make that kind of a foggy blue color. Then I'm gonna set that layer's blending mode to soft light. Then I'm going to select the mask for that layer. Then using my gradient tool with the style set to radial gradient, I'll drag a gradient out from the center of the image all the way outside one of the corners, creating this nice fall off, almost kind of like a vignette with a little bit more color around the edges. And finally, once all the pieces are in place, I'll use the shortcut Command Option Shift E, or on a PC that's Control Alt Shift E, to make a flattened copy of the entire image on a new layer. Then I'll use Filter, Camera, Raw Filter for some final color correction. And here I can treat it as though it's an image that just came right off my digital camera. Maybe bring up the exposure a little bit, a little bit of contrast. Again, there's no one way to do this. It's a copy of everything here, so there's really nothing to lose just experimenting with some of the basic settings. I also like to go into this Details section and sharpen the whole thing up a bit. 
Then in the effects section, I can create a little bit of grain, maybe even drag the vignette down to bring some attention to the center of the image. There's a little button down here that'll let you toggle the preview on and off. So really just like a photograph, you can really elevate an image by dialing in some of the final image adjustments. All right, well, that is the final image. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and that it'll be useful for you. If so, please do hit the like button and let me know what you think in the comments section below. I've always got more tutorials like this on the way, so be sure to subscribe. Thank you to the texturelabs.org Patreon supporters and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.